I monitor Reddit daily. People there launch lots of products. The most active subreddit for that called Side Project. A few days ago I got curious. Which types of products do people launch the most? Which popular existing services are cloned often? A year ago such an analysis was not possible, but today we have cloned Opus with a 200k token context window. Once I realized that, I immediately got a desire to talk to Reddit and discover the big picture about what people launch. How? The task has uh, two phases. First, get the data from Reddit, then upload it to Claude and ask questions. In this video, I will tell you how I parsed the data from Reddit and which interesting insights I learned when I discussed it with Claude, the smartest AI so far. Step 1. Data mining. First, I decided to use Reddit's API for that. It's quite easy to get JSON with the data of the posts. You just send a request to this URL and bam! With the help of AI, I quickly made a Python script to gather the data. It gets the latest posts, parses JSON and stores titles only. It went smoothly until I realized the script is only getting 1000 entries. I googled the problem and it turned out Reddit only allows you to get the last 1000 posts, no more. The posts exist, but you can't fetch them. Perhaps they got paranoid about LLMs learning on their data and limited it, but I wanted the data. Perhaps I can just search for the posts on the website. I tried that and they only displayed 200 posts on a page. They're Infinite scrolling is finite. I still need data. I decided to stick to this strategy. First, use in-page search to get 200 posts, but use various search queries. For example, I built or alternative to or I cloned and so on. This way I was able to get different chunks of 200 posts each. Then I simply collected the titles with small JS script and it worked flawlessly. Quickly I was able to fetch 1000 unique posts titles, each containing a maker's pitch. Most posts are published within a year, so it's quite fresh. Now the sweetest part. Let's upload it to Claude and ask questions. The first thing I asked is to break down the list of launches by types of projects. How many Product Hunt clones are there? how many website builders, and so on. And this is what I got. There are six clones of Loom, the screen recording app. Perhaps this is related to the huge accessibility of the new browser's API. You can easily build your own screen recording app. It's not hard. You don't even need to be a professional software engineer to do that. It's easy done. And people think they can copy the success of Loom by making this simple app, which is capturing an mp4 file and uploading it to S3 of AWS. That sounds easy, that can be built easy, but I, I'm afraid that's not so easy to grow such a tool. Loom is a huge corporation and they are huge not because they built a screen recording app, they are huge because uh, they know how to grow, they know how to make business. So if you're not an experienced startup maker, if you don't have a huge network or budget, I wouldn't recommend that. The next thing is Typeform. There are seven Typeform clones, aka forum builders. A forum builder is another traditional example of the projects makers build. It's easy, it's understandable, it's fun to build. Everybody needs forums, so the audience is huge. But again, the same problem. Typeform is not a forum building company. It's a company which has sales managers, SEO experts, blog posts, writers, and so on. And the tool, the form builder, is just a small part of their company. If you don't have an exact strategy plan for growing your form builder, perhaps it's not the best idea. Next one is CV apps. There are free CV apps. Every year I see lots of people making apps for building CVs and it's quite a popular type of project. I don't like this market much because people only need CV once, like they will pay you like $20 and then what? They will go away. Same with the wedding business. People marry only once, maybe two times per life, I don't know, but they don't do it often. We don't need your subscription. If we use your wedding app or your CV app, we won't use it every day or every month and your LTV will be low. I don't like this. Next one is Pastebin. It's a tool for pasting text and publishing it online. Again, super easy to build, but I don't know how to promote it. I'm 
super surprised five people made it. Why? And again, I don't know how to monetize that. Space Bean may be profitable because it has a lot of traffic. If you have millions of people using your Space Bean clone, you can put ads, but Otherwise, I, I don't know how you can earn money on that. Next thing is habit trackers. This is classics. People build habit trackers every year, maybe every, every month. And this is simply explainable. People just solve their own pain. They want to build a habit. They tried a dozen of tools. They didn't like any of them. And they just built their own. That's simple to choose an idea, but I don't know how you can compete on that because it's a B2C and B2C is a highly competitive market, very underpaying clients. You will earn not much money building a habit tracker. Next one, link in a link tree clone. Again, super easy to build, super widely used, but how to promote it? If you have an idea how to grow your link in bio tool, you can earn millions, but if you just wants to build a tool and then see what happens and nothing will happen. Lincoln Bio may be a perfect pet project for a student, but if you want to build a business based on that, first thing you need to build is not the product, but a marketing team. You need to find a way to promote your thing. We have examples when people build a successful Lincoln Bio, those called Bento, they built their own Lincoln Bio tool. They have grown it really big and it was acquired. They didn't disclose the amount, but they earned some cash. It's possible. Next thing is screenshot making tools. A lot of people make screenshot making tools, but it's hard to earn money with this kind of service because every PC and every Mac has a built-in screenshot making tool. And if you make something just a little bit better, if you provide a vitamin, not a painkiller, I'm afraid it's hard to make people pay for that. But I have a friend who made a screenshot making tool and he earned a lot of money with that, but he targeted corporates. His tool is a B2B project. He sells it to companies. If you want to sell it to company, okay, this is a good one. If you want to sell your screenshot making tool to thousands of users and earn five bucks per month from each, I'm afraid it will be really, really hard. Next one is to-do list. And the same thing with the habit tracker. When you want to make a to-do list, you tried a dozen of apps, you didn't like any of them, you built your own. It's super simple to pick an idea this way, but I'm afraid, again, this is a B2C project. B2C is hard to sell. It's underpaid, it's overcrowded, and you will need a lot of cash to promote your to-do list. I don't know how to promote a to-do list. If I was working as a marketer in a team which is building a to-do list, I would be desperate. Next thing is a bookmarking tools. The same idea is applied here. You need a bookmarking tool and you build one for yourself and then try to sell it to others. It's super hard to do because every browser like Safari or Chrome has its own bookmarking tool. Internal thing works okay for most of people. If you build something just a little bit better with better search or tags, I don't know, categories, it's fine, it's cool, but you will see hard times to sell it to people. Next thing is website builders. 29 website builders were launched on Reddit in the last year. 29, that's an incredible amount. I'm biased here. I can't say anything about that because I myself launched a website builder in 2018 and it was successful. Despite everyone said me, I'm crazy and it won't take off, but it did. A lot of people build website builders. If you're building one, please uh, watch till the end of the video. I have an advice for you. Next, notes taking tool. Same with the bookmarks. You will have a lot of fun building your own notes taking tool. You will use it and be happy. Your friends will tell you that you're a cool guy making awesome tool. I know such people, they make an amazing notes taking tools. People call them the small brother of Notion because it's cute, it's fast, lightweight, it's super cool, but they earn this much money. This is zero. Think twice. Next thing is health, fitness and wellness apps. Again, people go to gym, they work out, they don't like apps they found on the app store. They build their own. But how do you market it? How do you promote it when there are thousands of workout tools, thousands of yoga apps? How do you want to compete them? You will need to spend thousands, maybe millions on ads to make your widely adopted. Then you will need to hire an amazing product manager, an amazing business manager. These two people will try to convert these millions of users into paid users. It's a lot of hard work, which I myself try to avoid in my journey 
as a startup maker. I try to do as little work as possible. The next thing is feedback gathering tool. 10 of them were launched in the last year. Feedback gathering tool is a tool where you can ask your users to send feedback for you. I'm often approached by founders of such tools. They tell me, hey, try my feedback gathering tool because you need a place for your users to give feedback. But I can gather feedback in hundreds of ways. People send me DMs, people talk in our Discord, people send feedback in our public Trello board, which is free. Why do I need another tool for that? There are not many reasons why I, as a SaaS founder, will want a feedback gathering tool to be used by my team. Next thing is Patreon alternatives to services were launched. That's interesting, but again, I don't know how to make authors, creators to choose you instead of Patreon. Patreon is a huge brand. People trust Patreon. It's easy for the supporters of the author to pay to Patreon. Most possibly they already have an account on Patreon. If you make your own Patreon, you will have hard times to push on it. So if you build one, think twice how you will promote it. Next one is Twitter. 16 clones of Twitter. People launched 16 social networks. That was my biggest surprise. I I have no comment on this. If you're building your own Twitter, please let me know. I want to become your friend because I think it's too ambitious for a human to launch your own Twitter in 2024. Next one is Product Hunt. Six clones of Product Hunt. Product Hunt has hard times these days. They are drowning in bots. Bots are everywhere. In comment sections, in reviews, bots upload products. You can't compete there fairly. Product Hunt is bad these days, but it's Product Hunt. It's too huge to fail. If you launch your own Product Hunt, it doesn't mean all the millions of their people will go to you just because, because what? Because you made a clone? It's too ambitious. I myself have been thinking about launching my own Product Hunt for years, but I don't have an idea how to gather people there. My friend built a clone of Product Hunt, but he niched it down to Product Hunt for dev tools only. So people who make tools for developers, APIs for software things, most of them open sourced, launched there and they hang out there. Product Hunt is too hipsterish for them, too fancy and they use his Product Hunt, it's called Dev Hunt and it took him a year to gain the momentum, it took him a lot of resources, he did it, bravo. But if you make an exact copy of Product Hunt without niching down, I uh, just don't do that. And the last thing on the list is Pomodoro Timers. Only one Pomodoro Timer was launched, which was a huge surprise to me because I often see new Pomodoros on the internet. That's strange, people are tired of Pomodoros, I guess. I also broke down the list by categories. Let's go. First, language learning, four tools. I expect it here to be more tools because AI gives us a lot of opportunities in language learning, in the language learn market that there are only four. Next, directory type of project. It's a website with links and only seven of them were launched, which is again a huge surprise to me because making a directory is the simplest thing a maker can build, especially if you just start. Next is Chrome extension. 21 Chrome extension were launched and it's quite popular category. Next is crypto or decentralized. Only five decentralized tools were launched. Crypto is not popular nowadays. Finance. 15 tools were launched in the finance category. Mostly people make tools for personal finance managing. Next, dev tools. Tools for developers. 26 were launched. DevTool is hot today. There are a lot of projects in the latest YC batch, which are DevTools, so it's quite popular. But again, I was expecting here to be more of them. Next thing is growth or marketing tool. 11 growth tools, not enough. If you make a tool which helps others to grow, it means you're making a tool which helps others to make money. This type of tools is always hot. It's always easy to market. It's always easier to sell. If you are struggling with an idea, try to start with this category, marketing tool. Try to think how you can help others to grow. This way, others will love you and recommend you to their friends. The next thing I asked is to break down the list by B2C or B2B type of project. And I was super sad to see that 70% of the projects here are B2C projects and only 30% are B2B. It's a huge, huge mistake. Please don't do B2C business. You will have hardest time to promote your project, your notes taking app, 
your bulk marketing app, all these markets are highly competitive. If you make a tool for business, it's much easier to sell. It's as easy as writing in DM on Twitter. This is how easy you can make a sale and each sale will bring you much more than a sale of your workout app or personal finance app. Please do B2B, just do B2B. Don't think, don't argue, do B2B and your chance of success will grow 10 times at least. Next, AI tools. 11% of the tools are AI. That's not a surprise. We live in the new AI era. That's all. This little research was very interesting. I would say entertaining. It's even went viral on X. But what can we really learn from that? If there are 26 website builders launched in the past year, does it mean you can't launch one? Yes, you can. You can even make it successful and profitable. I did that. But do you really want to swim in a red ocean? It's hard. Before choosing an idea, you have to think about your growth strategy. If it involves competition, it will cost you resources. Do you have them? If not, why not avoid competition at all? But how? Let's have a look at the tool my friend John Rush built. It's a perfect example called Index Rusher. I'm not affiliated, he's just my friend. Index Rusher is an ultra niched SEO tool. All it does is one thing, pushing new blog posts to Google's index by calling its API. His service will never be used by SEO experts because it's too simple. Professionals would prefer notorious tools like Ahrefs or SEMrush because these services are for professionals. Index Rusher is for small teams of one, maybe two people who just want to bump their SEO a little bit by pressing one button. They need a simple solution and John gives it to them. He doesn't have to compete with Ahrefs, which has budgets for ads. He avoided competition. In short, if you want to clone a successful service, don't do it blindly. Think about how you can avoid competition by making your SaaS ultra niche. It will give you an advantage in the hardest part – growth.